Home Depot and buy them if you want to. Who's she has? Probably us. I know. One of us. And obviously, I know who I have, and I know who Kenny has. So obviously, I know who Jack has. I just know who I have, and then I figure out. Who what are you doing, a secret Santa yeah, with six be, people? Now we have to redraw. It's not going to be very they, secret. Yeah, I know. Yeah, we already figured out everybody. Well, they did. <laughs> uh, I don't know who you drive. I don't know. Yeah, because you probably told me. No, I do know who yeah, you drive. Yeah, because if you know what, who won. What have I just joined into? Uh, as usual, we're off on a tangent. Because they have to have each other, right? Yeah. All right, find your seats. Wait, get wait, your homework. Wait, 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 Jack, find your seat. Get out your homework. McKinley, sit down. Oh, oh, I'll put this back and take wait, them at the end. Wait, wait, wait. 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 Do two things at once, Jack. Yeah, so I know where I'm at. I'm, I'm still lost. I just can't figure this out. I'm just, they did. Out. They made a I matrix. Found scene. Was of Anna. I found so, out what Kim was. I mean, I know I had. I have. I'm pretty sure I know who Anna has. I Jack think we had this redraw and right after we came down there. Let's get into the candy. No, I don't want it. Yeah, that's not boring. Well, that's why you have to pie and ask the questions. <laughs> All right. Do you can have ask questions ask on the, question on the homework. homework? All right, Ben. Yeah, question on homework. Which one? Uh, 20. Probably wrong. 20. Yes! 20 or 20 something? Just 20. Oh, okay. So I don't need to draw this. Okay. So let's see. Uh, number 20 says uh, 3. I'm going to run out of space, but I'll try. 3x uh, plus 5. Over three, and we're told that that equals 18x. Are you guys paying any attention? Plus five over seven. But I know I got the right answer. I hope so, because I think we did this in class, didn't we? All right, Ben, cross multiply. What do you get? Um, cross multiply, you get uh, seven parentheses, three x plus five equals. I want you to do that in your head. Tell me the uh, answer. Okay, then 21x plus 35 equals 54x plus 15. I mean, is that, that is the number. What was it? 54? 54. X. Uh, plus 15. Yes. All right. Tell me what to do now. Uh, then you then you take 21x minus 54x, and you get 30. Let's subtract 15 from both sides. Yeah. Same time. Uh, at once so and now we have 20 equals 33x. Is that right? 54. Okay. So you get this ugly fraction that is 20 over 33, and you're done. That is the answer. Okay, so I didn't do it wrong. Good. I actually got something right for one. Woo! <laughs> uh, I would bet that you don't get it all right. Because there's just too many of them. All right. What's the bet? No homework for the entire app homework. Tomorrow? Okay. And if you lose? Then... Is it half homework for everybody? No. No, why um, Then, if I lose, then double homework, I guess? Right, well, I'm gonna, you're on honor, so I almost give you all the homework anyway, so I can't give you double. Um, um, do the class exercise? Again? Yes, tell us. Okay, so you gotta do the class exercise too. All right, let's go. Wait, you're, he doesn't get all of them right? Yeah, he thinks he's gonna get them all right. I don't think there's any possibility. At 28, you're gonna get at least one of them wrong. Right. All right. Do you guys want to make a, a guess of when he makes his first mistake? Uh, 27. Before 27? Well, that would be an easy bet. I didn't get 21 before 27. Well, sure. I don't think he's going to get past halfway before what? he makes his first mistake. You have no faith in me. All right. <laughs> you think he won't get before 14? I said he won't get to 14 before he makes his first mistake. I didn't know I didn't do all this much. It doesn't matter. I mean, it's just easy to even touch a wrong number, you know? All right. Go. Oh, by the way, 
since the odds are in the back of the book, hopefully he's checked that. So it's even an easier bet. You only have to get half of these right, technically, if you check your answers in the back of the book. All right, go. Number one. All right, number two. 28. Number three. 21. Number four. 36. Number five. Uh, four over seven. Number six. Eight over three. Number seven. Y plus three over three. Number eight. Um, five over six. Number nine. Uh, Twelve over five. Or two and two fifths. Number ten. Uh, ten. Number eleven. Fourteen over fifteen. Number twelve. Twenty. Number thirteen. Negative three. Number fourteen. Two over three. I nailed it. <laughs> right on the button. <laughs> right on the button. <laughs> Wait, what did I get on the What'd you guys get? I got, I got a five negative over five over five over. Negative one third. Yeah, I did not do that one right either. For which oh, one? Boy, I was worried there for a second. What is fifteen? Which one is negative one third? Number fourteen. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I'm sure it was just a silly mistake. But three x plus you probably did three x plus three. I did it wrong. If he can redeem all right. himself, can we all not have homework? Keep going. Number fifteen. Uh, two. Number sixteen. One six. No. What did you guys get? Five over two. Five over two or two and a half. Jack, you're bad. I was doing it all in my head. So number seventeen. So why'd you make this bet? <laughs> because I was confident. <laughs> <laughs> confident. Jack, you don't make bets with him. No, I didn't make I bets, but all of my bets. I'm just saying that that was a crazy. There's Wait, plenty I of problems. If I draw a perfect triangle, then I get this one. No, I don't care what the point is. I just want to do that. All right. Number seventeen. Eleven. Number eighteen. Forty-four. Number nineteen. Three. Number twenty. We're gonna do that. Twenty over thirty-three. All right. Twenty-one has three answers. Go. Twenty. Uh, KT equals twenty-one. SU equals twelve. KU equals twenty-eight. Correct. Twenty-two. Uh, RT equals two, SU equals three, KU equals 15. Number 23. RT equals eight, KT equals 24, KS equals 20. Number 24. RT equals six, KT equals eight, SU equals three. Number 25. KR equals eight, RT equals four, KU equals 15. 26. 16, 18, two. Yes. You got the first part right. Yes. But not the other two. 16, 15, five. 16, 15, five. I was close. 27. Uh, 27, 36, 12. And 28? 20, 10, 14. I, was, I thought you'd get some in the table wrong, but you got all the ones in the table right. Yeah, I got all the table right, too. That was the easiest thing for me. I was doing 1 through 20. In your head. I did 1 through 20 in my head. So. All right. Cool. I'll collect it in the class. Um, so today's a uh, uh, – it's an easy day. Does that mean no theorems? No theorems. Yes. I don't know. Theorems right tomorrow, there. I believe, is the – when we get our first theorem? We did great exercise. Oh, simple code. All right, so we uh, we finished the uh, planning. This is what it'll look like. Uh, have you already seen this in other class? No. All right, so uh, we changed. Monday will now be a, uh, well, it was always a full day, but we're going to actually take a, a semester final on Monday. It'll be my class, okay? So uh, you're going to come to period seven, and you're going to stay here seven and period eight. So this will be the last period of the day. I mean, like normal time, you show up right after lunch, and then we're going to, or not after lunch, after six period, and then you're taking geometry final. 100 question ish, something like that. Same as I did the last three years, two years, uh, multiple choice. If I get them all right, then I get canvas. Yes. Do yes. they have a semester final for, um, like, music or? Music? Well, that's up to their teacher. You got to talk to them. I do not believe that PE. Are you guys in PE or not PE? No, I'm in PE. Yeah, I'm I do not believe PE is going to have one. So do I just do PE? You yeah. still go to the class, right? Miss Kittle says that if PE and music aren't, then they can come watch the movie apart. Oh no! What movie? Yeah, but then what are they going to do during art? Yeah, well, we, don't don't have art. we don't have art. They don't have art. Yeah. Oh, okay. We only mm -hmm. have PE. Yeah. Which is for but you have music. But I want no, but I want to play basketball. We chose oh, just PE. That's right. That's right. Well, we might not be able to play basketball. Mm -hmm. I'm not too bad. But All right. So the way you will work every single day I'm on the half day schedule is you'll show up. You'll go to student advisement first, 30 minutes, just to get ready to take your final. Then you'll go to whatever it is you have for those periods. You'll take your uh, semester final, 90 minute class period. Uh, and then after that first test, what do you guys have first period? Science. So you take your science, 30 minute student advisement, then the science for 90 minutes, you take the final, then go back to student advisement for 30 minutes, like, whoo, test is over, let me catch my breath, or let me study for the next one, or let me eat a snack, that sort of thing. 
Then you take your second one, which is? That's, uh, that's special. Okay, then maybe you'll have that done. That's it for the, for the day type thing. Uh, 12 o'clock dismissal. That goes all the way to Friday. Uh, if you have an orthodontist appointment uh, for, where's your Latin? Which one's Latin? Uh, uh, six. Latin six. So if you had an orthodontist meeting here, guess what you're doing on Friday? Making up that. Uh, if you took all your finals, guess what? What? You don't we'll see you next year. Yes! I don't have to go to school on I Friday. Don't know, 2021. Right. The only people who have to come on the, on Friday are the people who have to take, do a makeup. That means I can send a picture of me partying. Who are you going to send it to? We're all going to be home. Oh. Yeah. Hopefully, okay. no one's at, no one's absent, so we can all go home. Yeah. Um, they are, then I can send a picture. Then yours yeah. will be, uh, as normal, will be uh, on Teams. Uh, all semester finals have to be done by Friday. So, Ben, if you are lazy, like you've been a couple times, and you don't do your semester finals, you're going to get zeros. So your mm -hmm. tests have to be done that day. Uh, I don't. I mean, for me, I'm going to post it as early as 7 a.m. type thing. So, uh, uh, for you, uh, so you can get started on. Wednesdays would be the hardest day. What's Wednesday? What's Wednesday? We have English and history. I oh, so. no, that would be the easy because English we're just writing the paper. Oh, that English. Be English we don't. Yeah, we don't. We're just writing the paper. Yeah, we're just writing the paper. Yeah. That's, that's, that's not too hard. You're history, but it's already right? planned history out. Hard, no. No. Yeah, it's in with history. And it's gonna go so you just study your butts off. So what, history, history's not that hard. All you have to do is memorize some names, memorize some facts, boom. boom. Know that crusade means cross or something? What did you say it means? Uh, it is a symbol you wear as a cross. Like you meant that you've gone out on your holy journey. Oh, oh. Can't we fail in that one and still pass? Yeah. <laughs> you just go go back in Latin three. Well, how about we not we fail anything? Latin Latin next year. We don't take Latin next year. Yeah, we, we don't get yeah, that. This is your last year. This, year. Yeah. this is your last you year. Last so year. does that mean if I take AP, then I have to do Latin 3? No. You had to talk to him about that. but uh, We should be offering, well, we're obviously we're going to offer Spanish again, but there'll be another language that we offer. We don't know if it's French or German. It's probably one of the two. Uh, that we'll offer. But we'll offer two different languages next year. So uh, the current 10th graders, only, all they had to choose Spanish. They, we didn't. We couldn't just for that few number of kids offer, hey, let's offer four different languages. We still can't offer four different languages because now there's only going to be two classes. Mm -hmm. But eventually we'll have three classes and then maybe, maybe we can offer three different foreign languages. I know that he does want to do an AP Latin class as well, too. Um, so that would be a fourth language. Um, but yeah, guaranteed you can be sure that you have Spanish and mm, it's gonna, it might be German, it might be, might be French. Uh, tenth grade has the most. You get three electives. So we get to pick. So we can pick one with language and two. That you don't have to even do that, but there's a, a requirement for two years of a foreign language. So, so most people knock it out. So you're gonna for us, you're gonna have three years of a foreign language, Latin one, and then two from another. Um, but it is entirely up to you whether you take. And I, I would encourage you to take uh, a foreign language next year. But it's entirely up to you. We have some tenth graders that didn't take foreign language this year. That means. 11th and 12th grade, then they must take a foreign language. The thing about uh, 11th and 12th grade, there's only two electives those years. 10th grade, for whatever reason, there's three electives you get to choose from. So does this year's Latin count for a foreign language? Yeah, well, the, our requirement for graduation is one year, three years of Latin, right? right. Uh, yeah, which okay. takes you to through the ninth grade, and then two years of a uh, different foreign language. So, so I don't have to take French two years. So wait, just three years of Latin? You could theoretically take Spanish one, and if wait, we offer wait, French, wait, French wait, one. Wait. But if I took a lot of Latin before ninth grade, no, I'd not count. But that kind of doesn't count. Well, I did Spanish. One before. year of Latin in high school, unless you like come to us, like not you guys, but like we have a eleventh graders show up, they've never even taken Latin one. They're not going to go and sit with sixth graders and take Latin one. So we basically say if you show up to our school, you know ninth grade and beyond, we we waive the Latin requirement. What if it's twelfth grade, but that's the last? What are you supposed to do then? You, you, you certainly can't take Latin. All right, here's your homework. That's seriously all of it? I have to do the class exercise too, Ben. <laughs> you can't talk. <laughs> uh, uh. Well, it looks like he gets over because there's only 10 classroom exercises. So that puts me up to 40 problems. problems. Well, there is an A, B, C, D, and E on question number 10. Oh. <laughs> Jack, you probably shouldn't have made that fast. Well, I'm just saying, yes, especially when there were 28 of them. 
If I draw the perfect circle, do I get an A? No. Because you have a compass. First off, you have to define to me what a circle is. How do you even know it's a circle? It, 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 it adds up to 3.14. What does? The circle. The diameter. No, the radius divided Five. by the. Oh, my word. You're something. scaring me. We're, we're in geometry. The, the uh, circumference divided by the diameter. Yes. Is five. Yeah, so if I draw the perfect circle, then that means it should definitely add up to 3 pi. I, ironically enough, I am literally doing the class in pre-calculus on circles, right? Uh, like literally, um, that's what I'm working on this week is making the class work. So we're doing the formula and the, it's fun stuff. If I, if I can figure out this exact classroom just by not looking If you can at tell it. me the formula for a circle right now, yeah, I will. You, formula I'll give you an A. Formula for some circle. circle. All right, uh, circumference? Circle. Circle. How do you graph a circle? Um, What's the formula? Oh. Oh, no, you told me this last I year. have told you, but it's it's not very memorable. It's, uh, oh, it's like the a... diameter times the radius, radius squared. No, it's the square root of like the radius times this. Oh. Oh. All right. Oh, wait, 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 Siri, Siri, tell me what the right is. She doesn't like you. She won't answer. Hey, it's, hey, two, here. it's two formulas. You have to use one and the other, and then they're It's actually one, but but the, it's just like two graphs. They're all same. And it's only be, that's only because of the Texas Instruments. Sarah has nothing to do with it. There's two. It's one because of Texas. Two because of Texas Instruments. Yeah, you can get that your phone. All right, phone let's do phone. class. Here we go. Uh, three basic things. They're all pretty easy. Uh, you will have to pay attention because some of this is new. Uh, we haven't really done anything new in this chapter yet. We've talked about some things. Yesterday was, okay, we got a couple proportions, but it still is just proportion stuff. Today is some new stuff. Hey, look, a sheet. We haven't used one of these we haven't. before the start. Wait a second. Someone wrote on this. You want a mic on this? Is this like a geometry of Someone wrote on this. What? Is this on it? Um, oh. What should I do with this? Just try it. All right. Uh, you guys know PowerPoint, yes? Yeah. Yeah. In PowerPoint, if I draw a triangle and I click on it, what happens? It disappears. No, it enlarges. It looks like that, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then what happens if I click this corner and drag it? Uh, then it's bigger. Bigger. Okay. So what am uh, I trying to show you here? Triangle, similar triangles. Yeah, so I made a triangle that is kind of like this one, same shape, but has a different size. This is the idea of map of similar figures. All right, so first definition doesn't have to be in your book of truth. It is a stranger definition what I just gave you. It says two polygons. Now we're going to strict our, our word similar, at least for right now, to polygons. Uh, two polygons are similar if their vertices, those are the corners, the angles, they can be paired. So you get, you're pairing the angles of the two shapes in such a way so that the angles themselves are congruent to each other, the corresponding ones. Uh, part one says you're going to uh, you're going to pair up the vertices so that the I mean the two that pair up are congruent to each other. It's got three angles, and you're going to have three congruent angles. Do we, do we have congruent angles or congruent? So CAC. It's called AA. Well, I mean, just and that's like, what we're going to do. Like C, 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 C. We're going to do A. a. Uh, no, we don't have that. And then just like so that. You, of course, AA would be a thing because of this. Uh, and then the second one is the different thing. So it says that the angles are going to be congruent. The easiest way to show you or explain that is this. I'm going to draw two congruent angles. There's one, and there's the, just trust me, those are congruent. Yes? And then I'm going to extend this this far, come down, and let's say I go five, right? Okay. Now I'm going to go 50. It's the same exact shape. Just it's the same shape, and what's the difference between these two angles? Bigger. Did, did I, are these angles the same or different? They're the same. They're the same. So that the angles stay congruent, but clearly the sides don't stay congruent. But that doesn't work in real life. Some, when something's bigger, it means it has a longer side. This is just. I don't know. We're saying that as well, too. But what we aren't saying is that the angles change. The angles stay the same uh, for similar shapes. What changes are the sides. So the sides are certainly not congruent. We say the sides are in a proportion. If I increase this by 10, this side becomes 50, so we get a proportion, or we get a ratio, and the two ratios are equal. So we say that the, the angles are congruent, but the sides are in proportion to each other. Uh -huh. And then the sides have to stay in proportion, otherwise it doesn't, it doesn't stay similar anymore. If I increase one side by a factor of 10, 
And the other side, by a factor of two, we get a, I mean, a completely different trend. So if I, if I took this triangle right here and made this side 50, but let's say this side right here is four and I make it eight, right? I, I get a different triangle. They're yeah. clearly not similar any longer, okay? So the sides have to stay in proportion. Can I use math? Uh, that's the symbol. One tilde, I should make it larger, but I didn't. Uh, that's the symbol for similar. So congruency has an equal sign with one tilde, approximately uh, uses two tildes, and one tilde is similar. This entire chapter, you're going to see at one tilde. Don't we also have tick marks? Tick marks are for congruency, remember? No, I mean, but tick marks are after, like, an apostrophe after the letter. Those are called prime notation, and that just simply means that a transformation of some sort is taking place. And yes, we will talk about that. All right, we good? Okay, so what he's talking about is this. If I have two similar triangles, clearly that triangle is not the same as this, but if it's been enlarged, uh, then C can't be called C any longer. We call it, we, we put one tick mark except we call it prime notation. So this is C prime, A prime, D prime. Uh, notice, before we called this, what kind of statement? A equality. A what? Congruency statement. Now I can't call it a congruency statement. We call it a similarity, we call it a similarity statement. statement. But a similarity statement says you know, the same thing as congruency statement. Congruency statement says that all the corresponding angles are congruent. Same thing for similarity. The difference is that a congruency statement says that sides are congruent. This one is going to say that the sides are proportional. So A goes with A prime, B goes with B prime, C goes with C prime. It's this statement is the new weird one we got to talk about. So it says that the sides are proportional. So I don't know, go to the small one, pick a side. A. A is an angle. Wait, C, C, A. C, wait, A, C, A. So A, C, and we're making a proportion, so that means it's a ratio. A, C goes with A tick mark, B tick A prime, B prime. Wait, no, A, C. A, Why did I write C? No, no. Uh, but it's a proportion, so we've got an equal sign. So pick another side. C, B. And C, B would go with? C, B. B. And since it's got three sides, there must be one more ratio. Which is A, B. So A, B goes with A, B. And I'm not sure why I'm writing that, because I did it nice and neat. Uh, you get that statement right there. Okay. Uh, does it matter whether we go from small to big? Or no. can we go from big to small? It doesn't matter. If we go from big to small, what would happen to our proportion? I oh, know it would be off. It would be. It would be just flipped. flipped over. But it would still be uh, equal. It would see, all of them. And it would be. But what I want to point out, if we put numbers here, give me a number. One. Three. Okay. And if let's say this one looks like it's been increased by four, maybe. So we would get twelve, right? So you would go small to big, you get a three over twelve. But to go big to small, you'd get. 12 over 3. Now, clearly, those are completely different. They're not equal, right? Well, they're uh, reciprocals. They are reciprocals of each other, but they're not equal. So it, it is important whether you know you're going from big to small or small to big for your proportions. You can't, like, uh, you know, flip this one and not flip this one and flip that one. Once you decide that I'm going to go from small to big, you stay that way for your entire proportion. All right, so that's not earth shattering, right? But what is, uh, uh, to wrap your head around the fact that the angles stay congruent, they're congruent, but the, the sides are proportional. Okay, so first skill, it's pretty simple. It's the same thing we did when we had the congruency statement. We just identified congruent parts. For triangles, it was both angles and sides. But for similar, uh, the angles are going to be congruent, sides are going to be proportional. All right, McKinley, you're up. Box two. You can look on the board or on your paper. Uh, uh, Give me the congruent angles. P is congruent to B without C. Okay. T but, is congruent to Z. Okay. S is congruent to Y. R is congruent to X. And Q is to W. And if you remember right, I told you there are two ways of doing this. The two ways are one, you can either look at the shape or you can look at the, words. the similarity statement. And of the two, which is the one that you should always look at? The similarity statement. Because how do you know this hasn't been flipped over? Yeah. Right? I mean, it looks like that that's correct because this one's really angled, this one's really angled, this one's not. And I would agree that's probably the right orientation. But the similarity statement, you're never going to make a mistake on. First letter goes with first letter, last letter goes with last letter. So always rely, if they give you the similarity statement, always rely on the similarity statement. All right, Anna, give me some proportional sides. 
So PT over VC is equal to, give me another one. Give me another one. Uh, SR over YX. Give me another one, McKeown. Um, SR. We just got that one. Yeah, I know. Uh, RQ over X. Okay, well, I'm not going to beat that dead horse, but yeah, that's how it's done. And, and notice, you guys started with small to big, but we could have gone from big to small. But as soon as we decide we're going from big to small, all of these on the top have to be big. Uh, uh, putting on the, the bottom one has to be small. Okay, cool. Uh, go ahead. Box three, all by yourself. Give me all the congruent angles and all the proportional sides. All right, I think we're on. And give me the congruent angles. A is congruent to G. G is congruent to H and S is congruent to B. All right, Al, give me one set of proportional sides. B, D over C. Okay, let me catch up. Go ahead. Uh, DX over XZ. And last one, McKinley? Uh, X, wait, hold on. XA over ZG. Okay, that's fine. DX over HZ, I'm sorry. Yeah. I said XZ. Okay, cool. We got that. Easy money. All right, new definition, scale factor. We had this in pre-algebra. We had uh, similar figures. Uh, we had scale factor. This is how much either something has been enlarged by or decreased by. But where does it come from? You take two corresponding sides and you write a ratio. In other words, you got to have, you got to first find two corresponding sides. Hey, that's what you literally just did. You told me which two sides. And then you just plug in numbers. And whatever those numbers are, the scale factor. Now, how many scale factors will we have for any similar figure? How many scale factors will we have for any similar figure? One. Ends up being two. You're going to have a scale factor if you go from low to high or high to low. So now remember, there are going to be reciprocal like that. It, well, you can think of it, they're, they're going to be reciprocals of each other, yeah. okay? So how does that work? Well, you're going to have small to big or big to small. You've just got to figure out which one you want, okay? Uh, in, in terms of if you just want a formula for it, scale factor is going to be the length of one of the sides. Any side works, but it's got to be in shape one and its corresponding side on shape two. But knowing that you're always, I mean, obviously, if they're the same shape that they're congruent, they're not similar. Oh, I should say this. All congruent shapes are similar to each other, right? But uh, the scale factor of two congruent shapes is? The scale factor of two is, uh, is like. What would be the one. scale factor of two congruent? It would be one, one, right? So one side's five. Well, the other side's five. You get five over five, which is one. Okay, so that's not too interesting. Um, the other thing that would be interesting is what is always the scale factor of big to small? It's one. Well, one is their congruence. So what's the right. scale factor of big to small? It's 10. In general terms. One. Is it going to be, well, one is no, no, their it's congruence. Gonna some, it's going to be a, a whole number. No, it could be a decimal number. So if one is, I'm, I'm standing at, hey, this shape is congruent to this shape. Over here, I'm bigger than one. Is that small to big or big to small? So if you go big to small, are you getting bigger or smaller? You're getting bigger. Big to small, are you getting bigger or smaller? You're getting smaller. If I scale this down and this side is 10, then this side isn't bigger than 10, it's smaller than 10. You just said the opposite. So if the scale factor, stay with me, if the scale factor is one, we're congruent. If I want to go on this side, am I getting bigger or smaller? If the scale factor of one is working ruin, if I go scale factor bigger than one, am I getting bigger or smaller? If I go on this side of one all the way down to zero, 
Yeah, we're not going to have negative. We're going to have between one and zero. So are you getting bigger or smaller if you go from one to zero? We're getting smaller. So scale factors of from big to small are somewhere between one to zero. If you're going from small to big, the scale factor is going to be one to infinity. What? How do we know you're not taking us to this thing? Yeah, exactly. Right. So unless it's labeled, you don't know. Um, okay, but I just want to point out, you pick out any, any two corresponding sides. The scale factor never changes as long as you're going, in this case, I'm going from small to big, right? The only time it changes is if you're reversing it, going from uh, small to big or versus big to small. So let's see how that works like in real numbers. So back to our Pentagon here. Uh, we can do either one. Note it, we can, but remember, there's going to be two of these. So what do you want to go, big to small or small to big? Small to big. Uh, All right, small to big, what's the scale factor? E, T, and V, R. What is it? Bz, B, Bz, Bt over Bz. True, but look at our shape and tell me why that's not a good choice. What he said was perfectly fine for a scale factor. Why is that not good for our our example here? How big is Pt? We don't know. We don't know. So therefore, it's not that you can't choose Pt over Bz. Perfectly fine scale factor. Just that we don't know how big. We want numbers. There's only one well, set of, I think so, B, Z over P, so what would that scale factor be? Okay, well, I was hoping you were going to say 20 over 32. Well, yeah, that's five eighths. Okay, so that's going from what? That's going from uh, um, big to small. You're like, wait a minute, I just went from small to big. Here comes the confusion. You ready? We said before that a scale factor one is congruent. If you want to get smaller, you got to be smaller than one, but bigger than zero. Is that smaller than one or bigger than zero? Mm -hmm. oh. Did I say that right? No, you did not. Okay. That right. Is that smaller than one, bigger? Did I say it right? Is that smaller than one and bigger than zero? Yeah, bigger than zero. Okay. So is this scaling up or scaling down? Scaling down. This is scaling down. But remember, the fraction actually went small to big. But the result of that is we get a scale factor that will reduce something. Oh, by the way, you ready, ready to blow your brain? Who's got a calculator? Uh, hold on. I don't. <laughs> no one? I, I forgot it. it. You may use a calculator at any time in geometry, right? And no one brings a calculator. All right. Here's the blow your brain. Take 32 and multiply by 0. 0.65. It equals 20. 20. 20. That's how division works. <laughs> What do you get? No, you don't. Take 32 <laughs> and multiply it by 0. 0.65. 20. 20. So that is, that is, that, like I said, this is usually where I'll get some confusion. Is they'll understand, okay, there's something to deal with scale factor and how you turn from one number to the next. They will forget how you would set that up. You would think that if I go from big to small for scale factor, that would actually decrease it. That actually uh, it does the opposite effect. If we want to find out how to go from big to small, we set up a proportion small to big, right? We put the, the, the side of the smaller shape on top, the side of the big one. And that's, all, that's the only way you're going to get a number that's smaller than one. We do it the other way, so that's how you scale down something. Yeah? Let me get eight over five, which is one and three fifths. We said that the other one is reciprocal, so to scale it up, you would simply take this and flip it over, right? It's, it would be the same thing. And by the way, it could be any two sides that are corresponding. Eight fifths is one fifth. Uh, which is 1.6, so take 20, and multiply it by 1.6, and you get, or you better get, Because right, and this is what you'll have to do tonight for homework. That's because three fifths of twenty is twelve. So, I mean, well, that's the scale, right? Okay, so that's how you scale it. But once again, paradoxically, ironically, whatever you want to think about it, if we want to scale something out, we don't go small to big. We actually went big to small for the for the uh, scale factor. Okay, uh, usually that that'll that'll cause problems, and they'll give you a word problem, and they'll say scale it up or scale it down. And you'll think, okay, scale it up. I need to go small to big because I'm scaling. I'm going from the small one to the big one. I agree, you are. But that's not how you get the scale factor. It's the uh, opposite or reciprocal of what you were thinking. Okay, uh, this more words for my regular class. Uh, flip the paper over. Here's what your homework looks like. All right.
So they're going to ask these seemingly simple questions. We're going to fill this whole page full of calculations. Uh, scale factor. We said a scale factor could be any two corresponding sides. All right, now you got to look at what you're given. We're given a lot of stuff up there. So what's the scale factor? The scale factor is two thirds over. Where are you getting that from? I'm looking at DC and D times C. And if you notice, if you look at all the other sides, all the other sides have a combination of. The other side of the I have a variable and a number. So yeah. even though technically we could choose 10 over Z, it doesn't tell us anything. It's a variable. So we're you're, you're step number one, if you want to find a scale factor, choose the one that you have two values of that are corresponding sides. Uh, by the way, you just better make darn sure this one's easy. You can kind of see the sides. Make darn sure they haven't flipped it around. Go to your congruency symbol. Find one side. Okay, DC is 20. DC is last. Second to last, so yeah, D prime, C prime, last second. Last. So it is 20 over 30. Now, that's your choice of whether you went small to big or big to small. But as we said, hey, the scale factor is two thirds if you want to scale it down. What would, what would it be if you want to scale it back up? It would be three over two, right? And it's easy to scale it up if you change it to a decimal. Now, we didn't do it here because it's a repeating decimal. Okay, so that's easy. Uh, X, Y, Z, here's how that's done. Uh, McKinley, where's X on the big or the small uh, quadrilateral? It's on the small, and it's side. Wait, would scale factors work with perimeters? We're gonna, that's what we're finding when, out. When an A, B just equal to A and B on the other one, so that would be 21 as well? Or? Well, we know that both of these would also oh, make a congruent. scale factor. They're, congruent. they're not congruent. Remember, they're, they're similar. Right, they're similar. And remember, what we can say about any similar shape is that all of their sides will be in a proportion. Yeah. In other words, all of their sides better give us either two thirds or three over two, depending on if we're going small to big or big to small. Yeah. So the question to you is, well, how do you want to write it? It's up to you. Small to big. If we go small to big, that's going to be x over 21, yes? Yeah. So we got to follow that same pattern with our scale factor. Which one was that? Is that three over two or two over three? And it is. So that's our proportion that we'll set up. So if we want to do X first, then I'm not saying you got to write that part, but I'm just showing you. Uh, well, that gives us X over 21. And then we know the scale factor of going from the small shape to the, the bigger shape is also 2 over 3. <coughs> and so therefore, I can solve that proportion pretty easy. In fact, we can do that one in our head. So the answer is? For X is 12. X is not 12. No, it's not 12. X is? At least I thought we could do it in our head. Oh my word, that's way off. It's isn't it ten and a half? No, Ben, it's not. It's fourteen. It's fourteen. Okay, but that only took us three minutes. I just did it wrong in my calculation. Hey, we just figured out X. So how are we going to figure out Y, Anna? We do this. <laughs> Is equal to. And that's the cool thing about scale factors, the scale factor doesn't change. So 8 over y is also have to be equal to the same scale factor. Where you'll go, go into problems is you'll forget whether you went big to small or small to big. Once you made that decision, stick with it. Or, I mean, obviously we have the other one, 3 over 2. Okay, this one I think you can do in your head, McKinley. Uh, let's see. So, uh... the, the other people couldn't do it, the last one. So if you do this one, you're better than them. Yes. All right. Um. Why are you even talking? All right. Allie, Z? Oh, no. Z equals Cool. I'm a math genius again. All right. So you do all this work, you're going to fill it up tonight uh, with, with, with calculations. The next question says the perimeter. All right, McKinley, we got two shapes here. We're going to do two individual perimeters. So we'll do the small one, quad A, B, C, D. So what are the measurements of its perimeter? 10, 28, 14. Okay, so can you do that in your head real quick? Uh, okay. Forty-two. Close. Fifty-two. Okay. Yes. 
Got All right, we're back to Anna. Big one, perimeter? Um, I don't know if I can do that. Let's see. Yeah, 45. Okay, I got it. I still have it. Sometimes you just choose. 76? Yes, no? Let's see. 5 plus 2 is 7 plus 1 is an 8. I got 78. 78. Yeah, I got 78. Okay. 78. All right. Now, be, Jack, if you already done this, don't yell out the answer. So, anybody want to take a guess at what the ratio of the perimeters are going to be? It's going to be 52 to over 70. Well, that's, yeah, but reduce, don't do it yet. But anyone want to take a guess at what, the, what it is reduced? Would be a good guess. You think it's going to be two thirds? Probably. All right. Why would it be two thirds? And all of the sides are proportional. All the sides are in a proportion. So if you add them all together. So you have to maintain proportion. The only time that's not going to be true is if we talk about some multiplication. Like if we were talking about the area of things, then we would not get that particular thing. We get something else. But if we're talking about just the side lengths. You get the perimeter by just adding, then yeah, that will that proportion will stay. You'll change that proportion if you add some multiplication or division. If all you're doing is adding, then everything stays in a nice friendly proportion. So yeah, it turns out that uh, it's two thirds. So that means we don't. So have to tonight for homework, when they ask that question, if you spend the time doing the math, you just wasted your time. You already knew it from the first question. In fact, when you found out the scale factor, you also found out the ratio of the perimeters. What if I well, you might if you forget this, right? So, um, I can't do this because I assigned these to Jack. We'd be giving him answers. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, let's, let's do it. All right, Jack, you may pick one oh, question on 10. 10. Let's do 10. Oh, wait. Oh. Well, we'll do the whole thing. We'll do the whole thing. All right, so this is 10. So, here we go, Judy, right? They like to, usually it's weird sayings. All right, so this is the same problem, just with different different values here. Uh, who do we leave off on? Jack? Was it Jack? Jack, the measure of angle Y is equal to? Uh, the measure of angle Y. Oh, y, y prime, sorry. Y prime is? Uh, McKinley, uh, the measurement of angle D is? Uh, the D is to D. I probably have a little D with a little prime. Well, it says angle D. So how big is angle D? It's 20, 30, Where it's 70. Where are you getting all that from? I don't know. What do we know about similar shapes and their angles? Oh, it should be 90. It should be 90. OK. Yes. All right. I was going to get there. Uh, the scale factor of Judy to Judy prime is? Optimus prime. You got no, you don't have any options this time. There's still only one side where you have two values. What do you get? Which would be? What is it? Four over three, or if you did it the other way. So either one would be an acceptable answer. Let's see what the book says. Do they put both answers? Um, they said four to three, but it could be three to four as well too. All right, there's your. There's your three problems there for each other. It can't, it can't be uh, three over four. It can if we, it depends upon how we set the scale factor. If you're going from small to big, then the scale factor is three to four. But if you're going from big to small, right, then it's four over three. I do. Uh, I, I didn't read the question very carefully. Does it tell us how it wants? Yeah, it says oh, yeah. Quad, uh, Judy to quad. Uh, that is right. That is right. That is right. Now it's three fourths. You got to pick this small bit. It, it says Judy to Judy Prime. Yes, yeah, so it's small bit. It, no, it's saying Judy Prime. Is. All right, Ben, that's it. Okay. Thank you, thank you. Have a good day. You as well, Ben.